everyone. Uh, welcome to Apache Khan Asia 2012. I'm going to talk about how we use and optimize Tomcat at Alibaba. My name is Hu Xin Zhang and I am a staff engineer at Alibaba Cloud. I am also a Tomcat committer and Tomcat PMC member. I'm also a member of Apache Software Foundation since 2019. This is a quick overview of how Tomcat evolved at Alibaba. At 2009, we have started some small trials of Tomcat, and we started to migrate from JBoss to Tomcat at 2013. At 2015, and Tomcat 7 has become the dominant server and container in Alibaba. At 2017, thanks to Spring Boot, we have shifted from the WAR file to JAR file, and we have to you started to use embedded Tomcat as the default implementation of Spring Boot. And at 2018, the embedded version of Tomcat, Tomcat 8.5, has become the dominant servlet container in Alibaba. Okay, this is the overview of how we optimize Apache Tomcat in Alibaba. Actually, we have done lots of works, but due to the time limit, I, I'm not going to talk all of them, but I will only cover the main part, including the observability, the diagnostics, and the deployment, and the performance improvement. And finally, we'll give some security tips. Okay, let's start. First, let's talk about the observability. In Tomcat, we all know that Tomcat has provided an API, JMX APIs, to expose its internal st stats. However, I, we found that the developers are very difficult to use JMX to, to retrieve the stats. So we built an extra module called Tomcat Monitor to retrieve the Tomcat internal stats and to expose them via an HTTP RESTful style. These stats include metrics for every level, including operating system, JVM, Tomcat, middleware, and application itself. And also we can use Tomcat Monitor to view the class loading stats. For example, we can locate which JAR file is a, a class is loaded from. This is very useful when you want to find out where a Java a, a class is loaded from. And we also will tell that uh, what jars are never loaded before. This is very useful when you want to do some uh, simplify, simplification of your application. So you want to exclude the jar files that never been used. Also, they will uh, tell them all the states and the CPU usage of every thread. And also, we will show that the connector stats. For example, we can show what are the snowy requests are inside Tomcat. For the tracing part, we have built in some integra integration with the tracing client. Uh, we're using custom Tomcat valves. They are built built in support, uh, building in integrate to our ex existing uh, tracing systems so that the trace can be correctly collected. Okay, this is the observability part. So Pandora, okay, let's talk about Pandora. Pandora is a lightweight isolation container. The background here is the business logic of web application changes very fast. The, the deploy the, the web application also may, uh, usually they will depend on some third party libraries. However, these libraries are not very uh, the same as what the middleware clients uh, depends. So the middleware client has its own depend dependencies. For example, the RPC framework 
and the message queue client, they may have required a version of uh, third party uh, libraries, for example, Netty or Log, Log4j. But uh, applications, the, the version the application requires, they sometimes are not satisfied by the middleware client. For example, if the web application re requires a version v1 of Netty, but this specific version may have some problems when they are used in by the middleware client. So middleware clients may have require require a v2 version of Netty. So it's possible. It's, it's impossible for them to have a unified version of third-party libraries. So we think about some isolation container. We try to use, try to use OSGI, but we found it not very uh, easy for developers to use. It's too complicated. So it's necessary to have a technique to isolate the dependencies between web application and middleware. So we built Pandora. Pandora is a very lightweight isolation container. So the, the, the problem, the, the right figure shows that Pandora has, has worked inside Tomcat and it has its own implementation in the core part and it has plugins. Every middleware client can be written as a plugin of Pandora. So every plugins have different uh, cluster loaders, so they, they, are, they, they can have their own dependencies. Also, application may use the uh, plugins provided by the middleware, and they, they, these plugins can export class to the, uh, the applications. And the applications may be, and the plugins may be aware of the lifecycle of applications. So this is a detailed uh, overview of the class loading part of how Pandora and Tomcat works together. So uh, as you know that uh, every module has its own class loaders. So they ha have their own dependencies. And these modules can have APIs. These APIs are exported to the shared repository so that the web application inside here can access them. So we modify Tomcat and we add some logic to, to, to check for the classes. First, if there is a exported class here, we will use it first. If, if not, we will fall back to the original Tomcat class loading logic. So that web applications may can, can have their own Netty or middleware or lookback implementations. OK, let's talk about the deployment standard. Okay, in Alibaba, we have uh, established the standard of every application deployment. The Tomcat being installed along with the reverse engine, uh, reverse proxy called the Nginx. So, uh, the the application may have its the application goes here, and every application may have its own specific configurations that goes here. And what we do, we do some uh, minor enhancement to our startup script. One thing you need to mention is that it can automatically fix the incorrect JVM arguments. For example, if you specify a, very, a large heap size, very large heap size, that is maybe larger than, you, <coughs> than the virtual machines. So at this time, it will automatically correct it for you and it will, will suggest the right value for you so that it won't be killed by, the, by your operating system. Okay, let's take a look at the multi-application deployment. So why do we need multi-application deployment? With the increased size of the microservice, the ap application communication gets more and more complicated. For example, if you have very small uh, size, the re request will be very simple. And if you get very large size of a microservice, the request will go here, and it will call here, and call here, and the trace will become very long. It, it introduced the problem that the average response time will get longer and longer. So what we need is to reduce the average response time here. So they, these are represented by the different 
uh, different microservice applications. So why do we, why do not we put different application into one? You know, maybe reduce the res to overall response time. Another, as another hand, as another hand, for the some long long tail applications, they often have very few traffics. And if we put one application under one Tomcat, it may be a kind of waste. We solve for the resource hardware resources. So putting them together may be some reduced, we can reduce the overall cost of the physical resources. So, so for the two parts, we consider, we're considering the multi-app deployment. So what we do here is to to shift the single application deployment to the multi-app deployment, multi-app deployment. So here we we want to tran tran we we want to uh, transfer the remote core, remote procedure core into a local core. The, the data shows that we we found that the most of the res our response time are caused by the re remote the remote core. So. Reducing the remote core can sig significantly reduce the average response time. But we cannot put all the applications into one Tomcat, okay? So, so what we do here is only, we only merge the application with very, very strong correlations. For example, uh, product details and uh, pr promotion details, they are used to be two different uh, web microservices. However, they also they, they often uh, have very strong um, relations. If we view the product details, we often will get the pr promotion details. Okay, so they have very strong correlations. We put them together. So the the, the problem here is that when application one wants to call, call method in application two, we need to know that whether there is a local version of application two. If there is, we will tra automatically transfer the remote call into our local call. We modify the uh, remote procedure RPC framework to 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 complete to to complicate this. And if there is not, we will do fallback to the remote call. Okay, so uh, so the problem here is. Application one and application two in Tomcat they are loaded by different class holders. So how do we, if we if application one want to call application two, how do we copy the object from here to here? So if we do a remote call, we all know that we we will use often we we'll use object serialization and deserialization here into object. So how do we copy? A clone an object across customers. This is a kind of question. What we do here is we use our object deep clone technique across uh, different customers. So this is a example figure of how we do this kind of deep clone. If we do this, this is a source customer and this is the target customer. We want to copy our object here to here. So first we will use the target loader to load the class here and create the target object. Pay attention to that way we need to use reflection because they they are two, two different class loaders. We cannot directly create an instance here. So we get the target object back, retrieve the target object, and then we use reflection to copy each field of this object recursively because if uh, one of the field is an object, we will do the object deep clone as well. So the, in a in a right figure, we 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 also compared how the deep clone method and the serialization method we use hashing by default. So we compared the two different approaches, and we found that the deep clone only cost fifteen percent of response time. So this is much much faster. Okay, so by doing multi-application deployment, we have improved the throughput over the throughput by more than 50%. We, there is a figure, this data shows that 
we have different scenarios that we all compared different approaches for single app ability deployment and multi-app deployment. So be, pay attention that the multi-app deployment requires four times a large hardware resource than the single app deployment. So we amortize it by div div dividing by four. So that even by amortizing, after amortization, the throughput, overall throughput has been improved by over 50%. So the red figure shows the average response time has also reduced by over 550%. So the, the red one is the our response time before and the blue one is the average response time after this is multi multi app deployment. So the response time has reduced by over 50%. And much, much more is that the response time getting more smooth because it has very lower um, P99% higher values. So this is very cool. Okay, uh, let's talk about um, multi-version deployment. Another improvement we've done here, it, it, is, it is also known as parallel deployment at Tomcat. So assuming uh, we are going to update our application with 400 virtual machines. So what we do here is we was often, we usually divide it into four rounds. Uh, each round we do update 100 virtual machines. So after one round, we stop here and we do some verification, make sure everything goes right. And then we do the next round. So the problem here is uh, normally if, if we we will take over 30 minutes to check everything is right. So it may take one or two hours in average in order to complete the update of uh, application with 400 virtual machines. Sometimes if something is not good, and if you would have a bad luck, it may be possible to be over four hours to update our applications. So it just took time to deploy an application. However, it took time to roll back it as well. If something goes wrong, if you want to roll back it, you have to take much, much time. So how about to increase the number of virtual machines at one time? So if we do 100 virtual machines at one time, this actually can reduce the overall deployment time. However, it, it, it will left a fewer available virtual machines here to the online traffic. So we, we only have, under this scenario, we only have half of the machines. So if we have some burst traffic here, it's very vulnerable for us to, 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 to accept such uh, traffic. So we are going to think about, is it possible to deploy an application without to restarting Tomcat? Yes, there is. And Tomcat has its own implementations called parallel deployment. It's um, kind of you, it, it is illustrated here. If we have a new version of Tomcat, we can deploy it as a version two and the Tomcat hand has two versions at the same time. But the problem here is the new version will go automatically online if we deploy them. It will immediately to start, start to accept the online traffic. This is not what we want. What we want is to want to do some checks to make sure everything gets right. And then we want to let it to start to accept the traffic. And if something gets wrong, it will need to undeploy this version so that the old version can back to uh, accept the online traffic. So it takes time to un undeploy this version. The third one is the resources may not be correctly released. If we do it multiple times, it may have some resource leaks. So how to avoid these kind of issues? We, we have done some enhancement 
to the multi-version deployment. First, we introduce a new state of the version. If one version is deployed, we put it in a standby state. So if we default deploy, deploy it here, it will never accept traffic immediately. So only if we do some health checks to make sure everything goes right, we have a dedicated port which is only accessed by the admin. So we, we do the access check here um, to make sure the new version is always in the right so that we can have a explicit command to switch the traffic between the old version to the new version. So this is the traffic shifting here. It's completely controlled by our deployment platform. So this is good. And when we want to do rollback, it is very fast. And then the old version will not be bring down as soon. So they will be put into the standby state. So everything is all right. And if we have something wrong, it goes here. We can quickly shift the traffic back to the old version. So this is a very fast rollback. But these are still not uh, safe because uh, we will still not solve the problem of how to elegantly release the, the resource that we required, especially the middleware. Not every middleware are well written or the third party libraries. Are they, they, the, all the resources they acquired are not carefully released once the deployment is finished it still might have some risk of a resource leak. So how do we, how to solve this pro problem? Okay, so what we do is we, we, we call the help from the JVM team. So they, the, the, the Dragon Whale is the open source version of the JVM runtime pro open sourced by Alibaba. So they provide a feature called multi-tenancy to help us to, pr to solve these issues. So every uh, logic uh, inside JVM can be written in a, a specific tenant. Every tenant has its own resource limit. They can limit their CPU usage and the memory usage. And more importantly, every logic runs in the tenant can be destroyed automatically when you call the uh, the tenant dot destroy method. So when the tenant is destroyed, or the logic or the resource it requires inside here will be automatically released. That is very helpful for us because we do not write any extra extra code. We just put it here, and the JVM will help us to do the rest. This is very kind of useful. Okay, the result for the parallel deployment. So the deployment application deployment time is reduced dramatically from one to two hours to 10 minutes, as well as the rollback time. It can be reduced from one hour to one, uh, less than one minute. It's very super fast. It's very cool. Okay, let's talk about something about the performance improvement. I divided into two phases, uh, the application building phase and the application bootstrap phases. First we do is here we do use the multi-layer Docker image for incremental build image buildings. So we know that not, not, not all the logic of our web applications will be changed at every update. Maybe it will change a very small part. So most of the parts are remain unchanged. So when building the Docker image, it is not necessary to rebuild the unchanged part. So we only build, the idea is that we only build the changed part. So we use multi-layer Docker image so that only incremental changes are built, getting built. It's very, very, very fast. We also use the parallel Maven build technique 
the latest Maven pro, uh, pro provides a new feature called Maven Daemon, so that the, the modules can be par par uh, simultaneously built in parallel. And in the application bootstrap phases, we do the smart annotation scanning. We all know that since Servlet, Tom, Servlet 3, Tomcat will start to scan the annotations called like something like at web servlet, at web listener, something like that. Tomcat will start to scan these annotations. But if we know that there is nothing there, Tomcat will still get that scanned. This is kind of a waste. So we add in the flag to disable such a scanning. Even this is not uh, following the spec correctly, but we found it very useful because most of the application may not have the such annotations. So it's kind of waste. We, we can avoid it. We also do parallel class loading. Since Tomcat 7, Tomcat by default uses parallel class loadings. This is very helpful. And uh, another enhancement is that we, we use even fast, uh, fast class loadings technique with an, another enhancement called JIndex. JIndex is a kind of index file of the JAR files to know that um, what contains in the JAR file. It tells that. So let's take a look next to the slide. So what we do here, uh, we, divide, we divide it into three phases. First, we will generate a, such JIndex file. This in the file is something look at this. For example, OK, we know that OK in aspect, JWaver, JAR, there are just these, these packages are here. And in our own framework, all these packages are here. So we, we know that. For each package, we know that which, which JAR file contains these packages. So at the bootstrap phases, we will first in Tomcat, we modify some of the logic of Tomcat so that it can read in the index file and build the jar index object. Okay, you first build it. And then when loading the application jars, Tomcat will build an array of jar files. So as long as that, we build a map here where the key is the file name and the value is the index of the jar file. So we know that, okay, aspect JWaver, so it's the first of the array, and the Avron framework is the first, uh, is the second of the array. So something like that. we built such a map here. So when, when we actually do the class loading, we will check if the index file exists a lot. If it exists the index file, we will start to, to do faster class loading. Okay, we first find whether, okay, when we get a class, we first find where, where the jar files contains such a class. Then we, we, from this map, we know that, okay, where is the jar file? Where, where is the position of the jar file? So we got, okay, some class is in the specific dot jar, and it's in the 32nd of the, jar, in the array. So we will directly jump to this specific jar and start to, to load the jar from here. So we just skip all the jars that not contains the class. This is super fast. Because if you think about a web application with over 1,000 jar, jar files under the web, web info lib, if we do the regular search, it will iterate over every JAR file and try to load the class. This is super slow. And within the fast, within this logic, we can do it very, very qu quickly. Okay, then let's talk about the diagnos diagnostics part. This is the RSAS. We use RSAS to help us. RSS is an open source library, open source by Alibaba, and you can actually did some troubleshooting on the fly. So let's first talk about the traditional way. If you want to debug the code, 
you 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 want to find out the problem is first you may think is to remotely debug the production code and the it will suspend suspend all the threads it's not what you want okay so another way is to you you can think is to reproduce it on the test or staging environment but sometimes it may not be reproducible and last you can you can think about adding some logs but it's quite time consuming because you want to change the code uh, package it and put it into test to staging and then to production and sometimes it may not be reproduced as well by using RSOS you can avoid all these issues you just uh, you troubleshooting the production issues on the fly you just attach RSOS into your existing Java process and there's no need to modify your code or there's no need to restart your JVM because RSOS used the instrumentation API and then you transform your bytecode and add the logic directly so this is very very cool so what can RSS do I have divided it into three parts and the first thing is you can you view this uh, internal infos like how many threads are there and what are the top busy threads what are they doing and you can view the garbage collection details and you can also view and modify the system properties or environment variables the second part is uh, you can search and quickly overview the class and method and class orders for example you can search whether a specific class is exist or not and you can also even you can decompile a class and see whether it's the logic is you you desired and you can also view the class order hierarchies and more important you can even redefine class you can change the logic the change the code and then make it work to uh, take effect immediately and the final part is the runtime debugging fear functionalities you can do very powerful monitoring of the invocation status for example you can get to view them the invocation parameters and the result the return of the re returned object and the exceptions and you can even execute an arbitrary command you can like you can change the log level dynamically you can get the spring beans and check whether what is a uh, inside the object what is the detail values here you can also do some performance profi profiling for example doing some flame graph to generate a flame graph and find out who, who is bursting your cpus okay let's take a look at the some of the examples first let's take a look at how to, how to view a method called parameters and results for, uh, for example i want to watch i want to get the parameters in of the this method under this controller and i want to know whether there's an exception exceptions so i write a command like this watch com dot example dot user controller dash e dash e means that you, you want to show the exceptions and dash x means the depths how depths you want to go into view for example the parameters if they, there it is an object here you, you want to dive into the object so do you specify the depths here so what we got if we input here input in the command here and then when we visit this method we can get the response this is the parameters here this is the parameters it's a kind of screen and the zero and the zero is the value and the exceptions thrown if there is a separate except exception it will be shown here we can correctly know that what kind of exception here is these are not completely going to uh, change any code it's completely dynamic next uh, let's take a look at the how to adjust log level dynamically uh, at some time you want to debug uh, to turn on the debug debug uh, switch of your applications sometimes you have to restart but you in using RSS you will never use going to 
restart your application anymore. So you just write a command like this, OGNL. OGNL is kind of expression language. And you can write in the here, something like that. So log4j logger, get logger, this logger, and get level. You can know the result. You can view the result. And you can, you, you can even call the method set level, something like that. And you can change the uh, level into debug. Okay. Or something you want. It's quite simple. Finally, let's do some security tips. Okay, at Alibaba, we will we, not going to allow applications to add cookies as they wish, because sometimes they will add some very, very large cookies. They will slow down their entire applications. So only whitelist cookie names can be added to, uh, to be added. So this is completely dynamic and be configured dynamically. Second part is second tip is uh, to run the Tomcat with a non-privileged account so that we won't limit uh, the permission of the account not running a Tomcat. The third one is that we would change the default default directory for de deploying web applications because by default the Tomcat will deploy this, these directories so we do not want this to be deployed so we change the default directory. And the next one is to change the shutdown port and the signal. We know that by default, Tomcat listens at 8.005 to, to, to listen for a shutdown signal and at this port. So for security, we change the port and the signal so that if, if one, someone deliberately send the shutdown signal to Tomcat, they will not be take any effect. Next is we disable all the access logins because it's a dupe, kind of duplicated because we are also available on the reverse proxy, reverse proxy engine side. It already has the access logic, access login. And finally, we we suggest to remove remove the server banner because if you visit the Tomcat, it will return a server called Apache Coyote 1.1. This is will tell the user that you are using a Tomcat. So in order to hide hide the Tomcat from the users. So we, we suggest to remove the banners so that this is not returned. Users do not know what server it is. Okay, this is all for today's talk. And thanks again for watching. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.